Welcome to Justice and Journalism with me, Judge Mike Carter, where I try to bring as much as I can uh, to you from the, around the state and around the metro area with regard to maybe uh, political ongoings, you know, uh, local celebrity athletes, um, you know, state senators. We had a treasurer on not too long ago, the uh, folks running for governor, any, anyone who really kind of come on and, and bring some information, you know, to the citizens of Missouri and again, mostly the St. Louis metro area. But, you know, kind of unadulterated, you know, not with my opinion and things mixed in it, but just what these folks have to say. And you can make your own decisions about what you think is going on out there. Now, this today's show is a little bit different because we're going on five years of doing some version of justice and journalism. If you don't know it, this kind of came out of what used to be the Cowboy and Judge show. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But I have with me here uh, Felicia Dixon, who's been producing uh, our show, Justice in Journalism with Judge Mike Carter and the Cowboy Judge Show, the predecessor uh, to this for going on about five years and also uh, oversees our law office in the background. We'll talk a little bit about that. But how, how this show, you know, we've had I was saying a moment ago, I haven't given you a chance to talk. But we've had, you know, Ashcroft on here. I go on here. Uh, attorneys general on here. and Folks, we never knew we're going to probably kind of come across our desk when, when this first started. You know, did you ever think, did you think you could handle it? Have you, has it been pulling your hair out? What's been going on with you in the background <laughs> making this happen? Um, it is a lot of pulling hair out. That is, that is true. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what to think about it when we first started it. Um, it was pretty neat to see some of the guests that we've had on here though. Um, I got to meet a lot of people, like political people, people who's worked with Nelly. And I mean, it's been a, it's, it's been, it's been a great, and what is it, you know, we'll do, people, some people probably don't know, we'll shoot sometimes nine episodes mm -hmm. in a day, right? Yeah. And originally we would bring like nine p changes of clothes so that we would look different in each of the episodes mm -hmm. and stuff. And we like take two or three trips to come up from the downstairs where we parked. And it, we just really, we didn't really fully know what we were getting into, did we? No, we did not at all. It was, uh, you know, kind of just sink or swim and getting the guests to show up. And, and I think a lot of people have been surprised, it seems like, in the production, uh, in the background, that, you know, most of our guests, they show up on time, they're ready to talk. And, you know, does that ever surprise you? Um, it does not, actually, because I feel like the way that we have things set up is, you know, we, we communicate them a lot. It's not just we get a hold of them once, say be there, and we're done. So like, I will make sure like I'll get their text number or their email and I'd like, okay, this, don't forget, this is on this date at this time. Um, we'll be sending you something to kind of go over and I'll send you the address. And then before like, Hey, just so you know, we have the show tomorrow. And then usually I give them my cell phone number so that way I can communicate with them while I'm here. So if they're running late or anything like that. So, I mean, I try to stay in constant contact with every single one of them. And folks don't know, but you started working and kind of running our law office, which is, you know, doesn't really have a lot to do with the show here, but our law office since about 2008. Correct. Yeah. And I'm guessing when you started then, you were 21 and a half or 20. I can't I remember. I was 20. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you didn't have any idea that you might one day be kind of producing a television show of any kind, I'm guessing. No. I mean, when I first started that, I just worked in a little desk at the front of a law office is all I did. <laughs> and when, you, when the folks who do come through here, when we're doing, so you're on set and we have mm -hmm. slides behind us. We got uh, kind of a makeshift slide. For Felicia today because she didn't know we were going to kind of uh, bring her on put her on the spot but we make some slides every time yep. uh, that you have to make sure are up on the screen while we're talking to the guests and then we've got kind of the show logos and we've got the guests coming up from uh, during the shooting of the next spot while they're coming up the stairs and are you able to even kind of watch what's going on when you're in studio and understand what's going on or is it just kind of a blur or? um it depends. I usually can, but um, I'm still trying to run the law office while I'm also here. So there are times when I do have to focus a little bit on the law office as well. Um, but for the most part, I can usually sit here and kind of figure out what's going on and see how everything's going. And so we've got at our law office about 10 attorneys and paralegals total mm -hmm. uh, that you oversee on a regular day. You might have, you know, a couple thousand clients overall that we're kind of managing at any right. given time. And um, Is it easier to and I know we're flipping around from, you know, the history of the show to running the law office, but is it easier to manage attorneys or other paralegals or they both have their uh, ups and downs or um, other paralegals are probably a lot easier. Really? Yes. 100%. Every attorney just yeah. thinks that their <laughs> crap don't stink. No, or? no, no. I mean, I just feel like 
I mean, attorneys have gone, they go to school for a long time. I mean, they, they're very smart, very educated. And so it is kind of when you go up to them, like, okay, well, even though I've been doing this 15 years, I'm like, well, we should probably do this. And they're like, well, that's not the way I was taught. Or, uh -huh. So, like, it, it is a little bit harder, but, I mean, we have great attorneys that work for us, so. And how, are there any similarities between, you know, like, putting this show together, the organization that's needed to do it? Like, I mean, you're, you're an organizational freak. Mm -hmm. I remember one time that you were helping your uh, kid do her Girl Scout cookies or something, and uh, you did it for one cycle. And I guess you did it perfectly like you do everything else. And then you said, well, this next time I can't do it. I'm going to let somebody else turn it over. And they were just begging you. They had never seen the way that uh, Girl Scout cookies could be overturned and uh, taken care of on a cycle or something. And so we know, I know how organized you are. But is, does that help? Is this a lot different, uh, the show versus what we do at the office every day? Or no, not similar? really. I think it's very similar. And that's just kind of herding cats like you know just making trying to make sure people do show up on time who's going to be showing up in court who's going to be showing up for our spot at 11 15 that kind of thing correct yeah like i i do a lot of i love excel spreadsheets so i do a lot of spreadsheets so you know kind of like what we do at the office we have spreadsheets for a lot of different things i do the same thing with this show so i've made a spreadsheet and then i already have like a template that i put together to have all like the guests that are coming on um, and then, yeah, just follow up like we do with clients. We follow up with clients all the time. Like you said, make sure they're going to be in court, follow up with guests to make sure they're going to be here and make sure they don't need anything. So it's very, very similar. And so when we first started out, if you don't remember, I was saying it was the Cowboy Judge show and uh, Carter Rethwich, me, Mike Carter, and Felicia, actually, the three of us started. She ran all the things we've been talking about. But uh, he's got a different show, I think, that he's running now, and I kind of ended up I think he was a little more sports in, oriented, as you might guess. The Cardinal Cowboys at the stadium all the time. And in fact, Wesley Bell was on uh, a second time with me after he had been on with the Cowboy and myself and said that he just had so much fun talking about his history as a baseball player at Hazelwood East. And I think him and the Cowboy had played on Slava or some other kind of league. So he really liked it. But do you, uh, putting you on the spot, the difference between the Cowboy, do you miss him at all that when he was here? Was it a little more fun or? Um, I think with this show, um, it's a little bit more, I would say, professional. Um, so we kind of get right down to the business of like political stuff and like like a, a judge on. You've had attorneys on stuff like that. So I do feel like this is a little bit more professional. Um, I do feel like with Carter, he is such a goofy guy and he does bring a lot of character. And so I think that's that is one thing I think was a lot of fun. Like when he brought him into the mix yeah and he had you know he has a lot of connections because he runs around and to, like the uh, when we did the um, Ronald McDonald house I didn't even know how that worked where they put families mm -hmm. up with their kids in a different place so that they can stay there throughout the the weeks while they're transitioning and uh, maybe uh, Angel's Arms was that it yeah, where that the, the houses the foster huh? care people and stuff like he's he's just always out there in the mix and meets so many people and uh, you know uh, I remember we went through a spate of like he knew so many realtors Oh, yeah. Realtor, realtor, realtor. <laughs> and I'm like, we just, we've had enough realtor. And I'm a realtor, a uh, broker and salesperson and have been for a long time. But, uh, but now we, we maybe are doing maybe too many political folks, you know, attorney generals and would-be governors. And, but we've had, uh, you know, folks on talking about uh, injecting under their mm -hmm. armpits so they don't sweat, getting their lips fuller, or hair implants. And um, I guess we got a pretty good mix. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think we do. I mean, I do feel like we at least have a few political people like, I think this time around it's a lot of political stuff, um, but I do, yeah, I do feel like there's quite a bit of mix, but I feel like you do take, I think your biggest focus is taking like the community like St. Charles County and surrounding areas, and so it doesn't have to just be political wise, it can be anything that's interesting. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much the goal. The, the law office, as far as, you know, the folks that we have there, um, running them, all the organizational, you know, aspects of it that we talked about, how, how, what are some key, you know, infrastructure things that you have to have in place as far as managing folks and getting them to, you know, be happy about being in there every day and doing, you know, the same thing as a manager? Did you ever think that you'd have to, you know, be such a cheerleader for individuals <laughs> or that kind of thing? Or Yeah, I just, uh, no, I did not. Um, but that you do have to, though. I mean, you have to encourage, encourage, encourage. So when someone you know, does great on like, if they're writing like a motion or something and I read them like, this is really great, you know, keep it up. Or, you know, if they come in and like, they get, you know, if we do, cause we do a little bit of sales and stuff too. So if they do get, you know, pretty good sales and are excited about it and stuff, you just have to be there for them and stuff. And I'm always, always trying to do everything I can to help them out too. Um, 
actually one of the girls said last week is that, you know, I don't just sit in my office and just do nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually out there. I engage with every single person, make sure they're doing okay. I, I mean, there's no job that's too low for me. So I will take whatever they need me to do, make sure that they're good spirits, good to go. So. And when you're pulling people in for the show here, Justice and Journalism, yeah, I guess you always hear, you know, I'll have my people talk to your people. Mm -hmm. Is that how it happens a lot of times where you're engaging with, you know, Attorney General Bailey's, you know, crew of, you know, public relations folks? Oh, yeah. Or does he get on the phone and say, yeah. I, I'll be there? Or? <laughs> no, very rare. Is very it? rare. Yeah, I'm always, there's always an end to go person for them that I'm usually talking to. Um, but yeah, so it, it's very rare to actually talk to them. And how often, like sometimes you'll get folks who kind of demand to know, you know, when it's going to air, mm -hmm. and we can't really tell them, right? And that kind of... Correct, yeah. And uh, how come we can't tell them? Well, I mean, we do several shows in one day, and then we have so many that we've already have in place. So, like, we have to tell, like, like we, that airs. So we have to be like, hey, we're doing this show on this day or whatever. So we can't just throw them in there anytime we want to. Yeah, and we had... Uh... It actually, it's interesting, some of the folks that come on, we give it, we, get, we do an outline to let them know, no surprises, right? So we're not doing investigative, hard-hitting, you know, kicky-in-the-teeth journalism, you know, and maybe that's kind of a, a weird thing to say, but well, most of it is, you know, let's let the public kind of hear and see what these folks have to say about their specialties that they're mm -hmm. in. And I know I won't name the person or the gender, but uh, they were coming on, very well-known uh, furniture person in the uh, St. Louis area and we had given him an outline and said you know we want to talk about you know some of the components of your furniture is it leather is it not and, and one of the first things they said when they got here was you know we're not talking about anything to do with our leather or offerings and that kind of thing do you remember any uh, any other guests who you had some things that, you know we just absolutely couldn't touch on or does it happen that often you know, or? I feel like there's only been one other one and that's it for the most part, I feel like everyone's open to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I think that's amazing, too, because mm -hmm. we'll, I'll try to, even though I just said it's not super hard hitting, kicking in the teeth stuff, I'll put everything down that I want to talk about mm -hmm. to, to each of these folks, you know. Um, one thing I have been having trouble with, now that I think about it, is uh, there's video, video lottery terminals are kind of pervasive throughout St. Louis County or St. Charles County lately, and if you don't know what that is, you sit in front of it at a gas station and hit the screen and, and try to, uh, I think it tells you what you can win, but if you keep going on, you can win a lot more, and it's a pretty hot button item because the, the gaming industry, hurrah, Harrah's, Harrah's, Maristar, mm -hmm. I believe, and, and other ones I can't name, uh, Isla Capri or something, they don't really want these gambling alternatives inside of these gas stations. But every time I go into these gas stations and see them, it's usually, you know, somebody with a kid bouncing on their knees, sitting at a machine for three hours, just touching the screen. And I, just, and I don't see any of them in our most uh, elite areas or right. uh, whatever, yeah, town and country here in the metro area, Frontenac. I only see them in, in uh, areas that are, you know, just kind of uh, less uh, affluent, I guess, mm -hmm. than those. And I can't get any politicos really to come on and talk about that so in general there have been some things that are just kind of hot button issues but but mostly when I send the outline and you know and you can back me up we send it out I want to talk about whether or not you thought it was a good idea for you to take office or anything kind of sensitive and and most of them will kind of surprisingly talk about yeah. it yeah yeah it's kind of it's, it's um it's it's pretty surprising the uh, do you have a favorite guest that we have had on it was all the the stuff about whether you can uh take injections, 60 of them I, in the lips. That's and that, kind of that is interesting. Because, um, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, I know people who have done Botox and stuff like that, and um, it is interesting to listen to that kind of stuff. Yeah, because I, I always, I can look across normally and kind of see you, you know, <laughs> while we're filming, and I can tell if you're paying attention or checking back in with the office yeah. and that kind of thing, and you run, like I was saying before, uh, the slides up and down mm -hmm. uh, behind us. Do you think that if somebody's out there and, maybe they're going to school to be a paralegal now or attorney like uh, what you thought you were going to end up doing as a paralegal is it very different uh what you are doing than it, what you are doing it is i mean at our office it's completely different um i didn't know really my expectations going in when i found you uh -huh. <laughs> um so i didn't know exactly what i would be doing but just hearing about like paralegals and stuff like you know they run to court they go to trial they they put together trial books and stuff, and I just feel like my role is completely different than that. 
um, because I am, like you said, I am managing the law office to make sure everything is running smoothly, um, make sure no one goes warned or anything like that. Um, and I mean, I do put motions together. I do file stuff online. Um, I do talk to many judges, prosecutors, court clerks and stuff, um, but it definitely is different. And like some folks, some of the things you do think about when a paralegal is like depositions. Yeah. Which that's not a trial, but a lot of talking back and forth. You'll have somebody in the hot seat, you got a court reporter there, and uh, the paralegal oftentimes will come up with the best ideas. You're there for three hours, seven hours, grilling folks under oath, and you've been to, I don't know, 35 of those, you think? I have, or, yes. And are those uh, hard, like you feel like a, uh, it's pretty intense, isn't it? It is. <laughs> How would you describe a deposition when you're there? Um, it can be a little bit... Um, Confrontational? Like nervous. Like it's kind of like, I feel kind of like, because then you're just like, like you said, you're grilling somebody or whatever, which makes them uncomfortable. So it kind of makes me uncomfortable. But I mean, you get a lot of good information out of them, though. Like, like for instance, if we do any speeding ones, like, did they actually tune, like, do their tuning forks? So they, do they do that before the shift, after the shift? I mean, do they know how to use the radar that's even in their um, patrol car? I mean, there's a lot of good things that you can definitely learn that they probably aren't doing. And one of the skill sets uh, that's kind of funny, when you set up depositions, if it's for uh, tax or traffic or DWI or corporate, whatever it is, is getting people to show up, right? Yes, yes. And it's very tough. The officers a lot of times are notorious for, they say they'll be there, but then they call an hour beforehand, say they're not going to because they're out of town for training or something. And mm -hmm. that's the show when you're trying to get people to show up for our slots when we do six, eight, nine in a, in a day. Um, that probably does transfer back the uh, deposition setups and things, don't you think? Yeah, or? it does. And then we have a lot of people too, like you said, like officers and stuff. Like, well, I'm working the night shift. Can we do it at this time and whatever? And we do have people like this too, like, oh, I really wanted to do a two o'clock. I can't really do a 10:30. So we have to try to move stuff around and make it work. And depositions, they can mm -hmm. be in Kansas City. I mean, mm -hmm. here in the state, if there's state law or in Kansas City, Cape Girardeau. Uh, Columbia, I mean, it's all over the state a lot of times, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. And uh, it takes a little bit more, you know, it's a little part of uh, organizing that office I'm talking about to, to get those things done, you know, during a case, isn't it? It is, yeah. And you've been to uh, a lot of political stuff mm -hmm. too, right? Down mm -hmm. in Jeff City at the Capitol, you yep. know, uh, when they were doing the uh, municipal judge thing after Michael Brown, they had uh, Senate Bill, you remember what it was, 572 yeah. or something like that, where they changed all of the ways that... Uh, Fines could be uh, appropriated, whether they could suspend somebody for not coming to court. And we would go down there and watch hearings, mm -hmm. take notes and make certain, you know, I was a municipal judge and you would help me. You weren't a clerk there, but we worked so closely together at the law office that uh, it impacted, you know, almost everything we did. Did you ever, when you started doing paralegal stuff, think you'd end up at the state capitol pretty no, frequently? No, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, I know we went down there the one time, too, when you were fighting those red light cameras, too. You were up there talking. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I was there for that, too. Yeah, and they ultimately, they didn't ban them statewide, but they banned them in our yeah. home, St. Charles County, and kind of a little bit of a crusade. I don't know if I would repeat all that <laughs> again, but very, you know, kind of you helped me every step of the way. We would go to do... Uh, like Channel 4, 5, and 2 here uh, locally, yep. uh, little spots, and I'd want to get our own version at the corner of, you know, Zumble and I can't think of the street, you know, West Clay or something, and you'd get our own kind of footage of it and mm -hmm. stuff while we were there. Yeah, it's been just a real long haul, and I was thinking, you know, this show is coming up. We started on it in 2019, is yep, that right? Yeah, January of 19, yep. And now we're in 23, so I guess it's really, it'll be going on, is it four or five years this coming I'll be going on five. Five in January of 24. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, do you think we should keep doing it? Or you got any I opinion? I think so. It seems like, I mean, we have people reaching out to us wanting to be on the show. Yeah. So. <laughs> and before we used to be kind of asking people yeah, a little like, bit more. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think so. I think people really like it. I mean, I take in phone calls at the office and stuff. Um, they're like, oh, we love that show and stuff. And like um, emails too. We get emails. Oh, we saw Mike's show. Like we want to be on it or can you tell us more about it so i mean we're constantly do you ever dread it when it's getting close and we're putting together you know the slides and getting the people together we talked about the you know kind of like depositions making sure people are going to show up like oh here we go again can you get anything done at the office while we're putting this no, together nothing um <laughs> it, it's 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 very time consuming very um this time around it was not bad um, we only did four or five this time yeah right? so this time wasn't too too bad but um yeah there are sometimes though when it's getting down to the last minute and i'm still waiting on people to send me you know what they want like if they have guests like coming with them like who's coming with you i need their names because we got to be able to have those 
And, um, you know, did you want me to do a certain picture? If not, I'll look for it myself when I'm doing the slides. So, like, it just depends on that, like, last minute stuff. Or if we have someone that, I don't remember last time we had someone cancel last minute. Um, they were ill. And so I had to, we had to hurry up and find someone else. So then I had to stay super late at the office to make sure I got the slides done. So Yeah. And no one appreciates it. No, no one. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I, some of the things, you know, that folks, you know, may not know about, you know, kind of what goes in to put in the show together is we don't really have a sponsor or anything like that, right? We don't right. sell any advertising. Uh, we don't, we've been talking about our law office now for the better part of 25 minutes or something. And we haven't mentioned the name of it. People could probably look it up and find it, but it's really been, you know, when we didn't talk a lot about this whole segment that we're doing right now, we kind of did it as a surprise to Felicia, because I knew if I asked her, she would never sign up to do it. <laughs> but we, that's a real, freedom that we have when we we don't we don't have an advertiser that we need to satisfy or if they're going to give us some money or anything like that to make sure the show goes on we just mm -hmm. uh, fortunate enough that our law office does pretty well and and uh, some of the clients that we have um you know pay us to do what we do and, and it's that i guess we don't really have an idea of a whole nother component of what the show could be like because you just described it is hard it gets in the way i can't do my regular job i know every time we have a shoot coming up I'm thinking, you know, are we going to keep this going? Because, you know, I don't do half the stuff you're doing, and I don't know if I want to go again. You know, but when I get here, it's always great. It's like oh, going yeah. to the gym, right? You get there, you don't want to drive there, but once you're done, you're like, thank gosh, I went. That was awesome. But it's very, uh, and I didn't tell you ahead of time that I would ask you, but have you ever thought about that, that we do exactly what we want to do? We don't have to answer to anybody. I have not, no. You really never have. I have never thought about that, but it makes sense. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a very liberating thing uh, for us, and I think it even helps us, the, the amount of folks that we have coming through on a regular basis and the disparity, the, uh, the ex-NBA uh, basketball players, the guy who runs the dermatology wing of mm -hmm. uh, St. Luke's, uh, the guy, the CEO of the Ronald McDonald House, the... Uh, Attorney General, the Governor, the you know State Senators, the you know countless mayors that have come through, Circuit Judges. You know if you don't know it, it's you know it's hard as a like I'm a judge in Winsville. I'm part of the Circuit 11, and I can talk as a part-time judge about pretty much anything I want. But regular Circuit Judges are supposed to be a little bit close to the vest on accidentally stepping into it and talking about something that could come before them on the bench, right? Right. So usually if you get a hold of circuit judges uh, or associate circuit judges, they're just not going to beat a path to your door to get on TV and talk about things. Mm -hmm. But we've had seven of them, you know, and they want to find out, you know, how do we get more jurors to show up uh, to our jury selection, right? Mm -hmm. How do you find out about our, our court programs where we're trying to do diversionary things instead of go to jail? And so it's really because we don't have to answer uh, to any advertisers or dollars coming in, I think uh, that's why we have a circuit judge who will come on here. And your professionalism on the front end, you know, where you come from a law office and you're reaching out to uh, the judiciary to come on and talk, they know we're going to have a certain respect for them and what they're saying. Do you, how do you find when you do reach out? Because sometimes we want someone to come on the show. Yeah. And uh, you don't even know who the person is. And you're reaching out. Is it generally well received? Yes. When? How? How soon can I get there? Or? Um, it it varies um, depending on the person. But usually, they as long as I they want more information. So I just basically what I normally will do is say, okay, well here here's some clips from our last show. You know, take a look. That's what we do. You do um, do that? I do. Yes. And so um, yeah, I take the time to do that. And then uh, yeah, they usually look over and they're like, yeah, it looks good. Or hey, I've seen that before. And uh, yeah, so. Do you know, because I do most of the placement of the spots, yeah. but do you know how often we air during the week, uh, Justice and Journalism? I think every day, don't we? Not every day, but <clears throat> five times a week. Yeah. It's uh, typically uh, Saturday at 6 o'clock, uh, Saturday at 10.30 at night, Sunday at 11 a.m., and then Sunday at 10 o'clock at night, and then very late in the morning or early in the morning, Wednesday at about midnight. Um, and that's the ABC schedule, and then we do a little bit of stuff on KSDK, uh, Channel 5, not as much. That's kind of more hit or miss, but on the ABC, KDNL 30, we're on there uh, five times a week or so. But I don't know that you ever really 100% knew that, right? No, I mean, I, knew, I did know whenever we had the Cowboy and Judge show, I was more, because I talked to them a lot more at the station and stuff. But yeah, this one, I don't really, you kind of took that part over, so. And so I've had folks who show up on set, you know, and are saying, you know, where's the Cowboy? Because we've only been doing this for about a year. How often when you reach out to folks to come on or when you've inter uh, 
you know, kind of greeted them, they're, you know, looking for the cowboy. It's not that much or a lot? It's or? not. I would say probably once I can think of, like, when I initially reached out to them. Yeah, and I was surprised because I, uh, I, I mean, we had such a good time, and I, as everybody can tell watching, you know, I have no mm -hmm. shortage of words and that kind of thing, but um, it's, it's been a fun run with the justice and journalism that you've helped me, you know, so much put together and keep going, and, you know, when, uh, like I said earlier, it can be kind of taxing, and you've taken over so much of it, but we've also had, and we might invite, we've had some interns, mm -hmm. two or three or four, that have helped us put slides together, done kind of the meet and greet green room stuff. And does that help you? Do they get in your way? Would you like to have some more people come and help as a, to learn from their studio at Lindenwood or a high school or anything like that? Or I mean, yeah, I mean, they could definitely, it's definitely help us. I mean, um, there is a lot because, you know, behind the scenes wise, as soon as we're done, we take pictures and you want to talk to them. They have to go get the new guests, bring those in. They have to mic them up. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of steps before we start them. So, yeah, having another intern or anyone who's interested in coming to the show would be great. It would be. Yeah, I, I yeah. invite you if anybody knows parents or uh, student, high school, college, if you want to come and help us with the show, we've had that in the past. And I, I think it is helpful, but I think once yeah. in a while you've got your own way of things. But I it's, do. It's, a, it, it's a great <laughs> learning experience to see the, the workflow and the organization and all of it to kind of come together. You just don't uh, appreciate all of the things that have to go on kind of. Uh, in the background uh, to bring it together and I think uh, yeah that'd be a great I think we should we've never really thought about doing any remote stuff have we where we do a shoot at the Capitol or uh, at St. Charles County Courts or something like that have we ever thought about doing that or um, we've kind of talked about it once before but we haven't done anything with it but I think it'd be pretty neat yeah and I think the the outreach studios who we work with they do that for some of the other clients they do yes. yeah and uh, kind of do it on the fly and, mm -hmm. and can come out for a certain amount of fee and stuff. A lot of folks don't know that you got a studio presence, you know, here in St. Louis with outreach studios that can go and help facilitate, uh, you know, a shoot, a commercial, anything visual or audio. Uh, and it's been really a blessing to have, you know, outreach studios help us for going on five years or we just really wouldn't have yeah. been able to do the show, right? No, that's true. I didn't know that there was anything like this either until yeah. you found them. <laughs> I know. It's so interesting. Rob and Thad mm -hmm. and uh, Jordan, everybody. And uh, yeah, I didn't know you could either, but I had done like a debate for a Senate campaign or something yeah. here in the studios and then reached out and was like, they're like, yeah, we can definitely work with you. And it's been, <laughs> been pretty nice, hasn't it? It has been, yes. Yeah, and affordable at some <clears throat> level, I would yeah. say. Well, I tell you what, you didn't know we were going to talk I today. <laughs> Thank you for all you've done putting this show together. I wouldn't be here without you, and I'm so glad we got a chance to talk about it, and yeah. uh, we'll just keep going. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Reach your audience with Outreach Studios. Studio 17 offers 1,000 square feet of customizable space that can accommodate roundtable discussions, podcasts, live stream content, and much more. For a different look, we offer View 17. This one-of-a-kind event center is fully wired for broadcast and is perfect for corporate or commercial content. With Outreach Studios, the opportunities are endless. Elevate your message, your brand, and your expectations with Outreach Studios.